Hello, movie trivia schmodown universe. We are so excited for season eight. Season eight is the biggest season that we have ever done. And we have launched the schmodown faction merch. That is right. Faction merch from all eight factions. They are available now. You like swag? Well, get a swag hoodie. Put on that hat with corruption hat. Put the shirt on. Get the championship design. Anytime you purchase faction merch, a percentage of the profits go into a pool. It is going to contribute to what the factions are playing for. Hell, I want to see them playing for $100,000, $200,000, $300,000. I want to see them playing for what they are able to play for, what they have deserved to play for. Who's the faction I'm supporting? Who do I want to win? And I get it. So head on over to the Skybound store now. The link is in the description of this video. If you're watching your favorite factions and you know when they're going to be competing, put on the shirt, put on the hoodie, put on the hat, and let us know. Take some pictures, tweet it out, hashtag Schmodown, and we will retweet it and show everybody who you are supporting. Enjoy the match, enjoy the merch, and we'll see you next time. Trivia Schmodown. I'm Christian Harloff, joined as always by Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. Mark Ellis, we have so much great talent that has come into the Schmodown this season through auditions, through people reaching out and finding these brand new stars. And that is definitely true of today. We have Jess, Jessica Schloth versus Frankie Alvarez. This is a match that uh, I didn't know how much I wanted it until I saw both the names. I said, wait a minute. Want to know? Want to know? And then you get Rick Raddus out there screaming and yelling how he wants the winner. I mean, this is already, this is a, a, a big story, and they're not even four or five months into this league. No, you get Schloth and you get Alvarez from different corners of the East Coast of the United States. And like you said, Christian, it has been a season with a ton of rookie talent. By far the most rookie talent since dare I say, season one, when everybody was a rookie, the, the crowd is saying, okay, we get it with the old veteran goofballs. We want some new blood in here. Well, that is what Jess and Frankie and their kill have brought into this league. And when you look at their managerial components here, because you have Sam Levine and Kate Mulligan, they're going to be making appearances today, coaching their young rookies through a match that they both dearly want to win, not just to face possibly Radis, but to make their mark in the Schmodown, make their way in their career that is young, but already full of promise. A lot of promise, and they both had great victories. Jessica Schloth had had a really tough match against Beth May, stayed in the pocket, won the match, and then Frankie Alvarez, who had a, a, an equal, a scrap against Brother Lomas. This crop of rookies that we have this season they know the game they know what they want to do and they want to keep moving so this is a this is a big match for both these both these competitors yeah i'd encourage anybody that if you want to know the medal that these rookies show just look at who they've already beat beth may and brother lomas two of the most touted rookies coming into this draft class and so if you can defeat them you're doing something right in the movie trivia schmodown. But enough yapping from us. Again, we're goofball. Well, at least one of us is a goofball. The other one hasn't been booked on that program as of my agents telling me no. Her name is Molly the Wonder Dog. So let's see how we got here with these two competitors, with their factions, with who's calling them out right now. We're coming to a different type of competitor in this season. They know the stakes now because both Beth and Jess didn't get shook after opponent's choice on both their end. They both stayed in there. They both hit their five when it was necessary. They played like pros. They are in the big leagues now and prove why with this match today, Christian. can say you know oh she's so soft-spoken like you guys aren't in these study sessions she's the very opposite of that i but trust me
Is this thing is this thing on? Just wanted to make sure. Frank the Animal Alvarez, back at you. After I dealt with that first internet weirdo, people only spoke about him. They forgot about, you know, the winner. I think anyone that's in my way is going to have to, you know, I think I proved today they're going to have to put up or shut up. I'm not going to succumb to mind games. Walked away with a big fat W. And I am back. Uh, like I said to him, matches are won and lost in round three. So there's no whiteboards. You you either know it or you don't. I am robot. That is correct. That is correct. That's Two cool. points. I hadn't noticed it until the playback, um, until I watched the match myself. Can I curse on here? Absolutely. I was <laughs> mortified. <laughs> I... You know, but if you sit there and, and the competitive nature gets to you a little bit, you could you can make some silly mistakes. I'm focused on Jess, the sleeper, Schlop. Fact of the matter is, I saw that match with Beth May. I know her knowledge. I know her work ethic. She, she, she clawed her way to a very, very impressive victory against a very tough opponent. But she's going to have to do that, plus a little more, in order to get past the animal. I'll tell you right now, I smell blood in the water. And Radis, I know you're watching. Shut your mouth. Because I'm going to deal with Jess first, and you best believe I'm coming for you. And I'm going to show you every bit of movie trivia knowledge that I have. And you better hope that everything that you have is enough to beat me. Here I come. Well, guys, you see, they both are, it, it, and to no one's surprise, I think the majority of the talking there is done by both Kate and Sam, and rightfully so. They're proud of their rookies. They're proud of what they've done. But but, I the curious thing here is Alvarez wants Radis bad. But does that mean that he's overlooking Schloth in order to get for Radis? That is the big question here. Is he too concerned about taking on the Rager when he should be taking on the Sleeper here? Because this is going to be, this is not going to be an easy match for either one of these competitors because Schloth seems focused. She seems like she's ready to go. So is the distraction of Radis maybe something that Radis wanted to do in the first place? Well, we're going to find out in just a second. Interesting point to look at in these matches, Christian, because we see it's not necessarily your freshman match, your first ever debut, where you're not really sure how to feel after you answer a question correctly or incorrectly after a big swing in points, possibly in round two. It's that sophomore match where you've tasted victory, and then all of a sudden you get into trouble early in round one, you're not sure how to recover. Let's keep an eye on these two competitors and how focused they can maintain, even if something goes awry. That's also going to be a lot of pressure on the den and the usual suspects you ready to get going oh i'm pumped for this one yeah ladies and gentlemen it's time for the movie trivia schmodown introducing first representing the den with a record of one win no defeats she is Jessica the Sleeper Sloth. Hello, hello, hello. Jessica Sloth, you are here, and look at that. That is a that is a wall next to you. That is a wall next to you. That is <laughs> look at the wall. So Jessica, I <laughs> you you know this is it's been a couple about a month or so or two months since your first match against Beth May. You're back here against Frankie Alvarez. You watched his match. What do you think about the animal coming into this match? Um, yeah, I think we kind of had similar debut matches, you know, maybe not the best we could do, but um, so I'm not underestimating him. I certainly hope he's not underestimating me because I am working really hard and I think I'm pretty prepared for this match, hopefully. Um, but yeah, he seems like cool dude. I don't know much. 
I would say that, except for that whole New York Yankees affiliation. Now, Jess, let's talk about how it's been for you since your match with Beth May, because you got a W. How does it feel to have all the fans say, hey, this keep an eye out for Sloth here. She's doing well. Do you buy into that at all, or do you try to stay just focused on the next match and get rid of all the hype and the noise surrounding you? I mean, I still feel like even though I won, people... I, I appreciated all the support and the nice comments, but I don't think that there was this big, you know, um, thing that came out of it. So I'm still just preparing it as if it were my first or my 10th. I don't know. How's working with Kate? It seems like this season, a lot of people say it. I've known Kate for a while. She seems like she's the most invested that she's ever been. And she really is working with the competitors. How's it been like working with Kate Mulligan? Kate's great. Yeah, she takes care of us and like checks in and is very involved like anyone who thinks she isn't like she definitely is. Um, and we would all say that. And so I'm really happy that she's my manager because like I get that sense of support and connectedness. Awesome. All right. Well, good luck to you, Jess. We'll see you in just a moment. Thank you. And her opponent representing the usual suspects with a record of one win, no defeats. He is the animal, Frankie Alvarez. How sweet it sounds, how sweet it sounds to be back here. Thanks for having me, boys. Of course, you are back, and I gotta say it, Frankie, look, man, I, I, I don't know you that well, but I feel like we've known each other for a little bit now, and I know how the New York spirit works, and I'm curious uh, as we saw in your promo as we've seen on your social i would guess that you were playing rick radis here today and not slow so what is it about uh radis that's keeping you focused on him and are you focused on on Schloth? listen radis is a pretender all right he's a pretender he likes to come out here he likes to play games he likes to talk a lot of smack and you know try to get everyone you know oh oh he's so fun he's so entertaining that's all it is. It's a shtick. Guess what? When it comes to me, I'm the real deal, baby. All right? I'm not going to put on these fun little games to get people riled up. I'm the real thing. But don't 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 be confused, okay? I might hold a grudge just as well as the New York Yankees hold that grudge against the Houston Astros. But right now, if I sleep on the sleeper, I'm going to be in trouble. So I am 100% focused on Jessica Schloeff. I, as an Orioles fan, still hold a grudge against uh, Jeffrey Mayer. But that's a different story altogether. Let's ask you about working with your faction, and in particular, your manager, Sam Levine. He knows a thing or two about baseball as well as the movie trivia Schmodown. So what do you feel like you've gained from his tutelage or from your faction mate's support? Well, I mean, we have a really, uh, you know, passionate, knowledgeable group uh, over here at The Usual Suspects. And, uh, you know, I know that this season uh, has not – uh, produced as much success uh, in 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 the in the points, you know, aspect of things, and maybe people can look at it and just say, "Oh, look at where they are in the rankings." But the fact of the matter is, is that in the schmodown, success is measured differently. And I can tell you that there is no other faction that is working as hard as the usual suspects. Uh, Sam will drop in just little tidbits of wisdom that you can't get anywhere else that are just going to sit in your head and blossom into the beautiful, beautiful flower that is going to help you win in this game. Last question before we get going here. Um, you mentioned obviously taking Jessica so serious. What is it? What is the strategy like preparing for the sleeper? Well, I think it's just that in uh, preparing, you know, and not taking her lightly. I think, uh, you know, Jess put up one hell of a fight and did incredible against a, a tough competitor in Beth May. And uh, thinking that she's just going to roll over and take a loss is unwise so uh treating it as if i'm playing any other competitor out there uh, i i treat playing a uh, jess Schloth as if i was going up against you know a dan merle so um you know just going in with that mentality i think is going to help me today hello everybody in the movie trivia schmodown universe hello fresh what is hello fresh listen to this hello fresh you're going to get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door you got to skip trips to the grocery store and you count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, it's fun, and it's affordable. And it's why it is America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just around 30 minutes. 
Try HelloFresh's quick and easy meals, 50 to 20 minute dinners, breakfast on the go, and more easy options perfect for your busy lifestyle. HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need to easily customize your order on the app within minutes. Easily change your delivery day, food preferences, plan, size, or skip a week whenever you need. I get so excited when the HelloFresh packages arrive to my house. Uh, it's like Christmas when it shows up because I really look forward to getting the chicken. For the holiday, or whenever I'm grilling, I throw the chicken on there. It is fresh. It is tasty. It is just tremendous. I love their chicken. I love their food in general, and it's a lot of fresh ingredients, and you'll love it too. So go on over to HelloFresh.com dot com slash mts12 use the code mts12 for 12 free meals and free shipping did you hear that it's pretty simple hello fresh dot com slash mts12 use the code mts12 12 free meals and free shipping it is hello fresh america's number one meal kit now go watch the match all right, Mark, our competitors have arrived, and now the rules of round number one. There are rules and regulations to the Schmodown. Here they are for round number one. The field of competition will hear eight questions from eight different corners of movie, trivia, Schmodown, know-how. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, well, at least not in round number one. As soon as Christian or myself ask the question, you have 15 seconds to get that correct answer written down on whatever surface you prefer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera. At the same time, you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. I remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right or you heard it fine, you just need to buy yourself another 15 seconds to get that correct answer. Use one of your JTE rules or just say, repeat the question. You also each have one challenge you may utilize at any point throughout the three round match. You may initiate the challenge. We'll bring in the managers. We'll all deliberate to our heart's content. And then it will be your manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place. Christian, we got an animal, we got a sleeper, and I have a sleeping animal just to my left. Well said. All right, we asked Frankie Alvarez, are you ready? Born ready. Jess, are you ready? I'm ready. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. Round number one. Question number one, we're gonna start in the realm of animated films. The Illumination Studio franchise features the voice talents of Kristen Wiig, Jason Se Jason Siegel, Russell Brand, and Steve Carell. This Illumination Studio. <laughs> Correct. You literally beefed it on the first word. Happens. <laughs> oh, we don't get the clock it's here. It's a today. franchise, right? Yes. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Ben's down. Let's go to the animal first. Despicable me. Yes. And let's go to Jess. Despicable me. Thank you. All right. There we go. We're off and running. Question two is in the world of comic book movies. There's these little comic books, and they make big movies out of them. And here's a question about that for a point. Which comedic actor co-starred alongside Val Kilmer as the Riddler in Batman Forever? Accurate title there. Batman really is you know, sort of forever. That really goes away, just takes a nap. Apparently, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 coming back again. Five, four, three. Nice. Two, one. Ben's down, and we start this time with Jess. Jim Carrey. Yes, and Frank. Jim Carrey. We're all tied up, and now we're gonna go to question three, horror slash thriller. What is the name of the demonically possessed doll in the Conjuring franchise that features in its own films? You know, speaking of Turtles too, Christian, I feel like you were right at that age where Vanilla Ice hit you hard, and I bet there's some embarrassing pictures we could all enjoy. No, not for that particular. I mean, yes, but not for that. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Hands up, and Frankie. Annabelle. Yes. And Jess? Annabelle. We are still tied, and we will get to question four. That's right. Competitors perfect through three, and your fourth category is in the world of action adventure flicks. And it is Alicia Vikander plays the video game heroine Lara Croft in what? 2018 film. I 
You're not giving up on that hat, are you, bud? No, I kind of like it. You know, I mean, again, I hate the Yankees hat, but you could wear it. Four. Don't worry. Three. Can't find it. Two. One. Hands down. Hands up, please. And Jess. Tomb Raider? Yes. And Frankie. I still know the cheat code. Tomb Raider. That is correct. And now we're going to get to question five. We're going to go to family films. The characters of Alex Pruitt, Uncle Frank, and Marv appear in what family franchise? The only cheat code that I still know by heart, I think I know Contra, but sometimes I get it wrong. I think it's easy, five. It's easy to remember that one. Four. Stop bragging. Three, <laughs> two, one. Pens down. Hands up, please. And this time we start with Frankie. Home Alone. Yes. Jess. Home Alone. So they both get it there, and it is five, five as you get to question six. Yeah, these kids might know their stuff in the world of movies, Christian. They're perfect, and now we get to the category of comedies. Mm. Ha, 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 ha. Just getting drier and drier by the day. Your question for a point. What 2009, excuse me, what 2008 comedy, 2008 features supporting performances from Jack Black, Jay Baruchel, Dana McBride, and Matthew McConaughey? Very excited about the year 2009 for some reason, but it is 2008. And five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, hands up. And this time we start with Jess. Is that Nacho Libre? It's incorrect. And Frankie? First Blood, Tropic Thunder. Yes. And Alvarez goes up by one as we get to our next question. This is question seven, fantasy sci-fi. Matthew Vaughn directed what 2007 fantasy film that stars Charlie Cox, Robert De Niro, and Claire Danes? Now, if this was a question about Christian's headcanon, then the answer would be every movie ever made, because Christian loves this guy. I do, but still... Can you repeat the question? Yes, we can. Here it is. Matthew Vaughn directed what 2007 fantasy film that stars Charlie Cox, Robert De Niro, and Claire Danes? A new clock here. You giving up on Vaughn, huh? No. Not giving up on him. I just like to put words in your mouth. Like we used to do. And five. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Hands up, please. And we're going to start this time with Frank. I always confuse these two. Is it the Golden Compass? It is not. And yes. I didn't know it. <laughs> Looking for Stardust. Stardust. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So no perfect rounds here as we get to our next question mark. This is question eight. Yeah, people love that Stardust. Never made it on my radar, but a lot of rom-coms do. And I bring that up because your category is rom-coms for your final round one question. For a point, which actress stars in the romantic comedies The Holiday, The Other Woman, and Sex Tape? Head scratch the last does. couple ones here. Yeah. yeah beat right myself up for that Stardust one. Throwing some curve. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, and we, this time we start with Jess. Cameron Diaz. Yes, and Frankie. Cameron Diaz. So it's still a one-point game, 7-6. Alvarez by one as we head into round number two. It is the wheel round, Mark. How does it go? Yeah, well, you intimated it's the wheel round of that wheel. It's full of fate and doom, but most of all, justice, because each competitor does get a spin at that there wheel. Once you do settle on a category, four questions emerge to you and only you, or at least to start, because the questions are worth two points, but stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We're swell fellows. We'll give you four options, one of which we're told by the writer smarter than us is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question recedes to one. So it is a one point lead for the animal, Christian. Both competitors looking spry early, but Alvarez gets the honor of selecting whether he'd like to spin that digital wheel first or defer to his opponent. Listen, I might be an animal, but I'm also a gentleman. So I'd like mm -hmm. to defer to Miss Schloth. 60 seconds, Kate, starting now. <laughs> You look loose. You having fun? 
I am. Listen, there was a couple misses in the first round. The, it's, the match isn't over yet, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> this is this is where this is where we pull into the lead here in the second round. So let's have a great spin. You look loose. You are hitting all sorts. I mean, you had a couple of pulls there. Good for you, <laughs> sis. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right, Ladybird. Let's do this thing. Let <laughs> us. You want to spin? Let's you spin. Just chat. Should we just chat for a bit? I mean, we can just run down the clock if you want. Take you a quick sip of water. Yeah, take some water. Dug, 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 Crash. I can't believe you broke the glass. <laughs> Hydration is important. Cool. Just a fun. Just we just we could do some foley artist stuff. You know. <laughs> you know. You want to pretend to tap your fingers on the on the desk and I'll. Let's bring our wheel up. So here's the wheel, and now here is the spin by Jess. And right. spin is in, Mark. And and just what a gem, Kate Mulligan is, Christian. Am I right? Oh yeah, 2010s. Jim, you have 60 seconds to talk to your competitor. We know what we do at this one. Well, there's a lot of decades, and I've only been alive for a couple, but I have Ragger. been alive for this one. Ragger. uh huh. So I was aware of movies by this point, so I think we should take it. I think we stay. Absolutely. This is one of the ones we talked about. I say we, we stay. I'm just going to walk into the other room now. All right, so Jess, you chose to stay on 2010s. Uh, we are going to give you four questions in that realm. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay. Let's make sure we can see the hands yep. from the competitors. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Thank you. All right, here's the first question. Who directed 2018's Death Wish? I believe that's Eli Roth. That's correct for two points. Question two. Who plays the character of Kyle Reese in Terminator Genesis? Jai Courtney. Two more points. That's your boy, Christian. He is now actually, strange enough. Um, here <laughs> is the next question. Okay. In the 2000 film, Young Adult, Charlize Theron plays a ghostwriter that has written several books in what genre? Let's go multiple choice. All right. Is it A, young adult, B, romance, C, mystery, D, thriller? I'll go romance. It is incorrect. Frankie, here, we're going to give you the question and the multiple choice options. In the 2011 film Young Adult, Charlize Theron plays a ghost writer that has written several books in what genre? Is it A, young adult, B, romance, C, mystery, D, thriller? I'd be crazy not to go with the young adult, A, as an apple. That is correct for one point. Uh, <laughs> All right, and so that was question three. Here's question four. Spike Jones directed Joaquin Phoenix in what film about falling in love with an AI system? That would be the lovely movie, Her. That is correct for two more points. So Alvarez gets a one point steal, but both finds herself up by four. It is 12, eight. Sam got 60 seconds starting now. Dude, see, here's why I love you because I know that right now you're angry at yourself for having missed Stardust. Quite because a bit. Even though, even though you ended round one with a lead, it wasn't as big a lead as it could have been. And that, my friend, is the lament of the champion. That's what you are. You are a champion. You are playing spectacularly well. That was a great steal, okay? You're not going to give up any steals in your round two because we know this wheel inside and out. You are covered you are playing great. Shake off the miss in round one. That means nothing. I am not worried. I am not going to harp on it. I always yep. confuse Stardust and the Golden Compass, but I'm ready to move forward. All I right. Moving forward to that wheel, and here it is. Wheel is up, and here is Frankie Spin. <laughs> humid in New Jersey today? A little bit. A little humid. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. That's a shame. And it is Stephen King. Stephen King, 60 seconds, Stephen King. 
All I right. don't hate Stephen King. I know we don't hate it. Uh, I certainly don't hate it. Uh, I There's other things on here I love. Yep. Uh, so, you know what? I'm feeling a little risky. You know, I can take a trip down to Atlantic City or I can spin this wheel again. I think I'll go with the wheel. Let's do it. So you're spinning again? Yes, spin sir. Again. All right, here we go. Here's the spin. Now, whatever Frankie lands on, he's got to keep spinning away from Stephen King. Plus, Is that course, because he's a Kansas. Red Sox fan? Jody Foster. <laughs> Jody Foster. Brilliant. So, all right. So Jody Foster will be the movies. All right, Mark. So now Frankie will get four questions in the realm of Jody Foster. That's right. And just like Schloth had two or one point for multiple choice, if you're not feeling your Aaron Judge power, you can ask us for multiple choice and we'll check down to Don Mattingly singles. Here we go. Four questions in the world of Jody Foster. Your first one. Jodie Foster plays card-playing con artist Mrs. Annabelle Bransford in what 1994 Western? Multiple choice, please. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, Bad Girls, B, Wyatt Earp, C, Maverick, or D, Wagons East? I'm going to go B as in boy, White Earp. That is incorrect. And so for a one-point steal, Jess, I'm going to repeat the question and the options for a point. Jodie Foster plays card-playing con artist Mrs. Annabelle Bransford in what 1994 Western? Is it A, Bad Girls, B, Wyatt Earp, C, Maverick, or D, Wagons East? B, Maverick. Just like the fighter pilot, and that's a big one-point steal for Schloth, we go back to Alvarez for a chance for two points in the world of Jody Foster. This is your second of four questions, Frankie. Foster plays a character called The Nurse, who runs a secret emergency room for criminals in what 2018 film? I believe that is Hotel Artemis. Felt a little John Wicky, didn't it? That is correct for two points. And now Alvarez on the board here in round two. We pivot to his penultimate question in the wild world of Jodie Foster, and that is, Jodie Foster plays a radio personality who begins a quest for vengeance against those who assaulted her and killed her fiance, leaving a bloody trail across New York City in what film? Multiple choice, please. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, the brave one, B, DJ, C, Vengeance, or D, No More Fear? It's A. A is an apple. A is an apple is correct for a big point. Christian used to have a handbag that said the brave one on it. I and did. now yep. we go to your final question in the world of Jody Foster. This will be the last question before we hit round three. Frankie, it is. This Neil Blomkamp film starred Jody Foster and Matt Damon. I believe that is Elysium. I liked it. Apparently nobody else did. But yes, you get two points. And now just like that, it is going to be a 13 to 13 tied ball game going in to round number three. It is round number three. It is the final round. It is all tied up. And now we are going to get the rules of round number three, Mark. What are they? I'm getting word PJ like Elysium as well. In round number three, this is the round that will determine the match lest we go to sudden death overtime. You will each hear three questions. These questions are to you and only you. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number three, but we do need some help from you. You're just gonna give us a series of numbers. We need three numbers from each competitor. These numbers may range from one to 20. You may not pick the same numbers as your opponent because each one corresponds to a unique category of movie trivia, schmodown, mystery. JTE rules and challenges still apply. And so we go to Frankie Alvarez first by way of default. Frankie, you do have a tie, but you have the honor of giving us your three lucky numbers first. From 1 to 20, what feels fortunate? 8, 4, 17. 8, 4, and 17 for Frank. And for Jess? I'll do... 12, 16, 18. 12, 16, 18. All right, so we have 8, 4, and 17 for Frankie. 
12, 16, 18 for Jess. All right. And Jess has two JTEs left, and Frankie has all three. See, we got 60 seconds starting now. All right, buddy. I have to remind you of something very important, very crucially important. Hit me. You have never trailed in this match. Okay? You have never been behind. Look, oh, that's true. He was behind you after you heard round two. Yes, well, he hadn't gone yet. That's the way <laughs> math works. Uh, so you've never trailed in this match, and I am proud of you, and you're not going to trail. Okay? You're going to answer the questions asked of you, and you're going to win. It's going to be that simple. We may be tied again at some point, but I am confident, my friend, that after all three round three questions, you will be the victor. You I'm crushed ready. Jody Foster. You crushed her. And the police are after you. <laughs> Hi, Kate. 60 seconds. Hi, Jess. Um, will you remind me after this match, I got to cancel my palm reading with Sam Levine because he's terrible at predicting the future. Yeah. Oof, remember when he told Frankie you, you weren't going to steal any? <laughs> and, oh. two, and then you yeah. did. Like on the very first Kind of awkward. <laughs> oh, man, that's got a really smart. Woo! Oh, well, that's got a sting. Listen, it's any... You... You were behind and you just pulled up right next to him. So guess what? This is when, yet again, Sam's future prediction doesn't come true. You are loose. You're playing smart. You're taking your time. You have two JTEs left. Let's close the deal. Let's do it. Let's do it. Also, right. you picked great numbers and it seemed like Frankie was trying to remember what numbers were. You know what <laughs> I mean? So let's yeah. do it. All right. So our competitors are here. Jessica Schloth will go first. And Mark, she chose category 12, and that is in the realm of musicals. musicals. You didn't sing it, Christian. That is correct. For two points and for a two-point lead. Your question, Jess. James Corden, Judy Dench, and Jason Derulo appear in what 2019 musical based off of a legendary Broadway show? And the Cats. The subject of a recent Rotten Tomatoes is Wrong episode is correct for two points, Christian. Now Schloth has a lead, and it's up to Alvarez to match. All right, so Alvarez, in order to tie the game, he chose category eight, and that puts him with horror. Horror movies for two points. For the animal, Frankie Alvarez, your question to tie. What is the name of the titular killer St. Bernard in the 1983 movie based on a novel by Stephen King? That would be Cujo. Only dog in cinema history we're not rooting for. That is correct for two points. We are once again tied, and so we pivot back to Schloth. All right, so Schloth chose category 16, and that would put us into fantasy sci-fi for her three-point question, her three-point question. All right. As Christian said, fantasy sci-fi is the category and the question for a three-point lead. What 2008 romantic fantasy film based on a story by F. Scott Fitzgerald features supporting performances from Taraji P. Henson, Jared Harris, and Tilda Swinton? Could you repeat? Second one. All right, you have one JT we're remaining. The question, what 2008 romantic fantasy film based on a story by F. Scott Fitzgerald features supporting performances from Taraji P. Henson, Jared Harris, and Tilda Swinton? Five. Is that the curious case of Benjamin Button? Christian, the sleeper has a three-point lead. That was a great pull from Sloth. And now Alvarez, who chose category four, will try to tie the game with the category of McConaughey. McConaughey is the category. All right. All right. And another all right. Frankie, to tie the lead of Schloth, your three-point question in the world of Matthew McConaughey, what is the name of the Matthew McConaughey film about a video store clerk who agrees to have his life filmed by a camera crew for a television show? Is that Ed TV? 
It is, and that means we are tied once again, Christian. The five pointers remain, and neither competitor blinking in round three. So they are tied up, and now in order to take a lead and force Alvarez to hit his five, Schloth needs to hit her five pointer, which is category 18, and that would be in the realm of romance. Realm of romance. Romantic movies. <laughs> it is. <laughs> the question for five points and a five point lead. Kyle Chandler plays Kate Blanchett's estranged husband in this film by director Todd Haynes. Five, four. Repeat the question. Last one. All right. Question in the category of romance. Kyle Chandler plays Kate Blanchett's estranged husband in this film by director Todd Haynes. The spectacular now. Incorrect. We're looking for Carol. Carol. Ah. <laughs> All right. So now Alvarez has an opportunity to win the game. If he hits the five pointer, he wins. However, if he misses, we are going to sudden death. All right. Here we go. So he chose category 17. We're talking biopics. I used to say biopics. People made fun of me. I now say biopics. And now that is the subject of your five point question, Frankie, for the win. And a 2 0 record in the movie trivia Schmodown. The question John S. Baird directed John C. Riley in what? 2010's biopic. Five, four, three. Repeat, please. First one. All right, you have two remaining. The question, John S. Baird directed John C. Riley in what 2010's biopic? Five, four, Three, two. Repeat, please. Second one. All right, the category is biopics. The question, John S. Baird directed John C. Riley in what 2010's biopic? Five, four. The Sisters Brothers? is incorrect we were looking for stan and ollie and christian we have sudden death for the animal and the sleeper all right so we are gonna find ourselves in sudden death with schloth and alvarez and mark what are the rules of sudden death well you each get spotted one jte rule and a challenge and when we get to the actual rules it's gonna feel a lot like a round one except a lot more pressure either christian or myself is going to ask a question worth a point to the field of competition so you need your writing surface and writing utensil handy because you will be writing down the answers you have 15 seconds to do so once we ask the question once we ask you by name or nickname please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone because it is sudden death it will work as thus if both competitors get a correct answer and score the point we'll move on to another question if both competitors miss the question we'll move on to another query if one competitor gets it correct and the other does not the correct answer or will be declared the winner of the match all right, because we are all tied up once again, we are going to start with Sam. Yes, Frank, you had some? I'm sorry, I, I blanked out for a sec. Any JTEs? One JT. 60 seconds starting now. Like I said, brother, you have never trailed in this game, and you're not going to start now. Okay? Shake it off. Yep. Shake it all off. Brand new ball game right now. Right yep. now, it's only 
about using the time you have given to you, using the JTE if you need it, and writing down your best attempt at an answer. No That's blank board. all I ask of you. No blank boards. You got this, my friend. All right, let's do it. All right. 60 seconds, Kate, starting now. Um, Jess, I know I already asked you to uh, remind me about canceling the palm reading, but we also remind me to send um, Sam this uh, this little rag so he can polish his crystal ball because <laughs> he is it's just not working. His future scene. Remember when he said that that he was going to win in round three? That, yeah, that didn't happen. Didn't, didn't pan out. That didn't pan out. <laughs> you are. I am so proud of you. You have had such great pulls today. I I love your energy. I love how relaxed you are. You take it's freaking hurricaning outside. It's hurricaning out chilling. there. <laughs> so the worst thing that's going to happen today is, you know, Frankie's going to lose a match and your house is going to blow away. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're going to win. And I can't wait to scream in your face when <laughs> you do. Have All fun. Right. In the best Just way. stay right where you are, sis. You are exactly where you need to be. All right. So the, excuse me, sudden death is about to begin. Frankie, are you ready? Yep. Jess, are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Here's question number one. Adam Driver, David Oyelowo, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Tim Blake Nelson have roles in which Spielberg film? Ooh. Five. I have to use my repeat on the first one. <laughs> to repeat? Okay. Yep. Adam Driver, David Oyelowo, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Tim Blake Nelson have roles in which Spielberg film? Five. Four. Three. Two. One, pens down, pen, hands up. And we start with Frankie. Is it Bridge of Spies? And Jess? War Horse. Lincoln. Lincoln. <laughs> Lincoln, so both miss. And Mark, now we get to the second question here. The second question. That's right. Good guesses by both competitors, Christian. They're just, you know, wasn't right. But, but good <laughs> guesses from both. And so now we move on to your next question. And it is... Who played Alma Beers Del Mar, Heath Ledger's wife, in the film Brokeback Mountain? Writing down. Yeah, and Christian, even though they're rookies, a competition like this, not new to them. No, at all. And five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, hands up, and Jess. Michelle Williams. And Frankie. Michelle Williams. Both correct. As we get to our next question, there is our next question. All right. The great Kali made his big screen debut in what 2005 Adam Sandler sports film? Neither competitor seems phased oh, in the slightest. Yes. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. And Frankie? The longest yard. And Jess? Happy Gilmore. And go! Frankie Alvarez and the longest yard. They take the victory in sudden death. Two big fights with Frankie Alvarez as he goes with Lomas and now with the sleeper and finds himself the winner. 2019 suspects picking up two big points here and it was a stressful one. Gentlemen, congratulations and we'll see you in just a few. All right, so both competitors, sudden death, 
three questions, I believe, into it. And yep. it, it was um, it was a battle from the second it started in the first round. Sloth just would not go quietly into the night and kept on fighting until finally at the end there, uh, Frankie Alvarez pulls the longest yard, wins the match. And that was a uh, that was a really good match. Yeah, and you think about that run of Adam Sandler sports movies that we got. I mean, it could have been Happy Gilmore. It could have been The Water Boy. You think The Longest Yard. And so a tough question there that Frankie the Animal Alvarez was all over. And when you look at the youth and the knowledge, Christian, that combination. Look, when I was their age, I probably knew more about movies than I do now. But I don't think I could have pulled a lot of those questions, answers, because whew, the yeah. writer tested them. And I'd say both competitors passed the test with Frankie Alvarez, the animal, getting the W. All right. Well, now we are going to hear from Frankie Alvarez and Sam Levine as they are with Jillian Marie, who's going to be talking to the winners. Here we are. Congratulations, Frankie. You are coming in this as a rookie with a 2-0 record. How is it feeling after that win today? You know, Sam, did you did you take the time to polish that crystal ball? Did you? you know, I did. I don't know what uh, Kate is thinking. I paid a fortune for that crystal ball. A nice spit shine. Market. A nice spit shine and mwah, came out beautiful, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, I feel great, Jill. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you for the question. I feel great. Uh, I am amped. I am pumped. I probably woke up my sleeping infant daughter upstairs, but I don't care because I'm 2-0 and in the movie trivia showdown. And that's awesome. And let's talk about that match for a second. Um, that first round, Stardust, Golden Compass, what was going through your mind during that question? Listen, 2007, there were a lot of other things on uh, the animal's mind than Stardust and good old Charlie Cox. And, uh, 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 you know, so I always confuse those two movies. Uh, if there was a wheel slice just for those two movies, I'd be in big trouble. Uh, but guess what? I'm not. Uh, you know, I, I was sitting there going back and forth. I believe she used her repeat and I was like, maybe. And then I just didn't pull it. Uh, I'm a perfectionist, you know, and I, I was a little frustrated, but. At the end of the day, I, I had to shake it off and move forward because there was no leeway to, to miss a step against my opponent today. And Sam, I do have a question for you. Um, how much are your rates for palm readings? Because it looks like that crystal ball is indeed right. working today. For you guys, they're only $10. For Kate, it's $1,000 because <laughs> I'm not here. If you're not in, I don't want, don't waste my time. Do you see uh, anything now, in my palm? I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you up, Jill. Do you I, see anything in my palm? I just see a couple of belts in there, but we can get oh, to that another time. Okay, oh, all right, cool. Yeah. Oh, oh, I mean, we are 2 and 0 so that could potentially be in your future. But uh, both Sam and Frankie, overtime, were we expecting that? Uh, what, what were the nerves going on going into overtime? You know, look, I don't want to say we were expecting it, but we're never not expecting it. Okay, uh, as 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 Frank said before, we prepare for every match as if we are facing a Dan Merle. So it's all about knowing where you are in the match and knowing what you need to do to get to the next spot in the match. And you heard me say it only a couple times, we never trailed in that match. No matter what Kate wants to say, we never trailed in that match from start to finish. And that is all I can ask for from any one of the suspects. And Frank did not disappoint. Frankie? I mean, listen, I knew I had to bring my game. Uh, the sleeper, I mean, uh, it, it seems like no one was expecting uh, uh, the match to go, you know, as far as it had gone, you know, into overtime. And uh, I knew I needed to, uh, you know, after seeing how she did round one, round two, round three, I knew I needed to just not miss. I needed to make sure I was doing everything I could Uh but it got a little it got a little late over there for the sleeper and it might be past her bedtime because she did have to end up going to sleep in the end. And and who'd have thought, oh, Frank, you watch all this wrestling. Is that going to do you any good? <laughs> Eat your heart out. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Rick the Rage Rattus, Triple R. Mm. Someone's been calling you out a bit. You're now 2-0. Do you have anything to say to the Rager? Listen, uh, this ain't the first time I've seen an internet weirdo try to come for me. Uh, I showed the world what would happen when Brother Lomas came up against me. And I mean, look at me now. And uh, Rager, you better hope, you better hope and pray that you start living that lifestyle, bud. Because I've been a Rager way before you were even a thought, okay? So it, you better be prepared. You better be ready. And if you're going to talk that talk, you better walk that walk, boy. Because I'm coming full force at you. And I'm hungry. 
He's hungry. <laughs> He's hungry for your rager. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Awesome match. Awesome match. Uh, can't wait to see you soon. Thank you. Back to you guys Thanks at sure. the desk. Thank you, Jillian, and thank you to and congratulations to both. It's Frank. an animal, Christian. You get it. It's an I, animal. It's a good move. Um, which one? So. With that, I will say uh, what a match it was. And obviously, Frankie Alvarez has had his mind set on the Rager. Well, now he might just get what he wants. They're both 2-0, but he had to earn it here today. Jessica Schloth putting up a hell of a fight. And we are going to see exactly how she is feeling with Kate Mulligan, who is who are with Jillian. Jillian? Jessica, Kate. Things didn't... I, 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 that crystal ball, I mean... <laughs> what what can I say about that crystal ball? <laughs> it wasn't right. He said they were going to win in round three. Also, what he keeps talking about, like, we never trailed in this match. If you look at the round two score on its own, he only got five in round two and she got six. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, she didn't technically like the scar on trial. But also, like, he earned less in round two. So look at the round two score. Uh, that's a trail. That's a sad trail. Now, Jess, after that match, it's we was a neck and neck you guys were fighting it back and forth it was him and then you and then tied and then overtime yeah. what was going through your head when you realized oh my gosh i'm going into overtime <laughs> well yes the when it we were going into round three and the math and it was tied and i was like oh i know like this could happen and i was like kind of half expecting it so i was just trying to stay like calm and in the pocket the whole time you know um to be honest that last question don't know who that person was that they were asking for. So uh, maybe it's someone said it was a wrestler, I guess. Maybe that's why I don't. Kate, you must be really <laughs> proud of how Jess played today. It didn't, not a W today, but she played amazing, able to go into overtime today. How are you feeling about the gameplay from the sleeper? I'm, I'm so impressed because first of all, she knows so much more than I do. <laughs> And I just feel like she had such deep pulls today. And I feel like her composure is something that, like, I really admire. I just feel like she stayed calm. And to be able to, your second match in Schmo, like, as in the Schmodown, and you take it to OT, I don't care, trailing, not trailing. But that was, she put up a fight. And I've said this so many times, the way, sometimes the, the W for me, yes, I understand there's two points on the line here. But like the W for me is the way that Jess conducted herself today. And I feel like you can look at like, you can look at this match and see how the future is going to be great with her. And so to me, this was a W for us. I know we're not getting the two points. Meh. Like uh, to me, seeing how solid of a player she is and how solid Frankie was. And she went up against it. By the way, Frankie, on behalf of your spouse, how dare you wake up the infant? Uh, we're all very <laughs> mad about that. I'm on the phone. With them. Um, but he's the one that's going to be losing in the future. That, that's, I'll tell you what, Frankie took I me mean, out in that household tonight. I'll tell you that <laughs> right now. Um, but I, I just, I'm excited I, about Jess. And I know how hard she works. And I know that she has the support of everybody on our faction. And that, that you know, all of them were so excited checking in. Like, she's murdering these sessions. She's that, you know. So to me, this wasn't an L. This was a W, like, for truly looking into the crystal ball of Jess's future here. This is this is one road bump on a really beautiful uphill climb, and we are, you know, I'm I'm so thrilled that she's on the den. <laughs> That's beautiful, and you bring this amazing presence when you play too. It went into overtime, a whole, extremely stressful situation, and you're you're the sleeper for a reason. You were calm, you were cool, you were collected. You were like that little sloth, uh, stuffed animal you have in the back there. So it was perfect. It's always a joy to watch you play. And now you have got, have two matches under your belt. You have a win. You have an overtime in your belt now. What's mm -hmm. next for you in this league, and what do you want to do? I mean, I would definitely love to play again. Um, but for now, I'm definitely going to continue to support everyone else in our faction and always be in there with the studying. And then I will learn in that process, too. And I'll be even better in my next match. So, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Let's keep that mentality for the next one, Kate. Jessica, thank you so much. I'm excited to see you play again. Uh, Christian, Mark, back to you at the desk. Gotta love the attitude by the sleepers where she, I mean, and how are you, how could you not be proud of this? She's she's in there, she makes it to the sudden death and she gets questions. She just 
Didn't know. So that happens. It happens to a, a lot of great competitors. And she, I loved her answer. Well, it just means I want to play again. And now I'm going to root on the faction. So it was a great match by the sleeper. But the animal takes the victory. He takes the win. And now he finds himself at 2-0. and oh, And that is good. And that is what the suspects needed. As Frank said it before, the suspects are having, are, are, they are looking up right now at everybody they need to start to catch up and this is a great way to start doing it because frankie alvarez starts to put himself you get to two and oh great you get to three and oh then you start moving up just a little bit more and this is going to be something if him and the rager do wind up clashing yeah i mean that's another way to gain points for your faction and get your faction up there in the standings is to call people out or maybe in this case respond to people calling you out or just have a war of words until there's no choice but to have these two people clash in a matchup that's what frankie the animal showed us here today is Radis going to be ready? And on the other side of it, Christian, you look at Schloth, I think competitors watch this match, and she might have gotten the loss in overtime, but I don't think a lot of them want to see her across from them on the question desk because she is one formidable opponent in her young career. So two really promising rookies here with a bright future in the Schmodown ahead of them. And speaking of bright futures, it's great to see Jillian Marie here. Congrats to Jillian. She's a great, great force job. in the community and happy to have her on the show today. Check out her show, Certain Point of View. They're on every Sunday on YouTube. So make sure you go and check them out. Great show for uh, everything you want. You want to get, you want to find out what's going on in the match? I guarantee you they're going to be talking about this. They'll probably be reacting to it, considering that she is going to be in it. It is a great show. Molly Damon uh, is also on the show. So please go and check that out. All right. So, Mark, that was the match. It was a great match. Very excited to see these two rookies really bring it. Uh, congratulations once again to the suspects. And congrats to you, buddy. We did it again. Oh, well, thank you. I was going to say, from any point of view, this was a top-notch match from two worthy competitors and two pretty good managers, and I would have neither one of them ever touch my palms, so don't ask. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for our great team behind the scenes and to our competitors and to Jillian Marie for helping us out on the desk today. So we will see you guys very, very soon. Peace out. That's it. That's all I got for you. Peace out. Okay.